Surviving 100 days in Minecraft Hardcore Mode. A challenge that I didn't think I could complete. It took try after try after try after try. But I did finally reach 100 days, right? But I didn't just survive 100 days. I thrived for 100 days. And here's my journey. Oh, but before we start, I want you to know of the challenges that I set forth for this video. Before hitting 100 days, I would need to get full netherite armor and defeat the ender dragon, and also bring his egg back to my base. Enjoy the video! I spawned in right by a river and started punching my first tree immediately. Then I was able to craft a wooden pickaxe and started to look around a bit. I spotted a village off in the distance and decided to head that way. As I was going over there, I found a little cave and I grabbed some stone to upgrade my tools. Then I went back into the cave and grabbed some coal, some extra stone, and even a few pieces of iron for a shield and possibly a pickaxe later on. Then I went to the village, grabbed all of their hay bales so that I could make bread, because in hardcore Minecraft you can actually die of hunger. I grabbed a few things in the village and then I was off. I made myself a nice little animal pen and then went to sleep for my first night in this new world. The next day I woke up and I knew that I had to go mining. I crafted some torches and even some new tools, but before I went into the mines, I did make a little farm. I planted sugarcane and wheat and then I went down into the mines. I was really successful in this trip. I got tons of stone, I got iron, coal, redstone, some lapis, and eventually guys I did find a little vein of diamonds. I was so happy. There were four diamonds here and that was plenty to make a pickaxe and I was really, really excited. I went back up to the surface and then went to sleep. The morning of day two, I was ambushed by a zombie but luckily was able to defend myself. I smelted some of the iron that I had mined the day prior, then I did a little bit of inventory management and crafted a shield, some iron armor, and then bred my animals. I felt a lot more powerful with some armor and a shield, and then I spent the rest of the day cutting trees. On day three, it was time to get to work. I woke up and bred my animals and then harvested my sugarcane farm. We really needed books. Then I upgraded my chest system and I was on the hunt for clay. I really wanted to build my house out of bricks. I thought they looked so beautiful. Then I went to the nearby village and trapped some of the villagers in their homes. Don't worry, I'll be back for them later. The next day, I got lots of materials for my base. I cut down trees, grabbed some beautiful pink flowers, and then I decided to craft some furnaces to smelt all of the clay I had gotten. I bred my animals once again, and then I was on the hunt for leather. As I was out, I found a ruined nether portal, and I got a gold block and a ton of kelp. Then I went around slaughtering chickens. I, I don't really know why I did this, but uh, yeah. I crafted some bricks and then went to bed. On day five, I started the outline of my house. When I was done, this is the shape that I had. I decided that I really liked these stripped oak logs, so I got a bunch of them. Then I went to a nearby ravine and grabbed stone, coal, and even some granite. Day six, I let my creative juices flow and I started really constructing my house. I knew that I wanted a bunch of different materials in this build, including bricks, cobblestone, stripped oak logs, and spruce planks. I also crafted some new tools and armor on day six and went to get more clay and sand so I could build windows. Days 7 through 12 were also spent building my house. I wanted this design to be perfect, so I spent so many days perfecting it. There were also a few points during these days that I needed to go refill on materials like wood and clay. At this point in my world, I could really use a fortune shovel. The roof got me a little confused, so that did take a little bit longer, but I was very, very happy with the house once I was done. As I was finishing up my flooring in my house, I was actually attacked by some pillagers. Luckily, I was able to take them out and even got this cool banner. On day 13, I crafted myself a brand new shiny diamond pickaxe. I decided to go mining and got a ton of stone which I needed for some builds. I also got a ton of gold, iron, coal, and even diamonds. By the end of this trip, I was able to craft a diamond sword and full diamond armor. Then I went back down into the mines and grabbed some obsidian. Sorry cows! On day 15, I did a bunch of home renovations. I put a ceiling onto my base, which made it look so much better. I would make a second floor very soon. Then I even created a bedroom and added in a bunch of windows. This really added character to my house. And of course, I started moving in some of my items. Sad to say, but I don't get much more organized than this. 
Day 16 was also spent making my house look cool. I crafted some of these awesome lantern things and decided to put them all over my house. I am actually obsessed with these and I just love how they look. Sadly, they don't give off much light, but that's okay. Then I started to make my second floor of my house. I was going to put a little enchantment room up here. I actually love how the staircase came out and was very proud of it. Then I started placing some books down and did a little bit of farming before creating this weird lantern thing. On day 17, I decided that I wanted to hang up a map of my compound in my house. So I got to work, I crafted myself a compass and then a map, but now I just needed some leather for an item frame. I was out on a mission to find a bunch of cows and luckily I did. I also grabbed some oak wood and some other materials. When I got back to my base, I was able to craft myself an item frame and hang up my map. Then I got to work crafting a few books for my enchantment table. I actually got five bookshelves today and placed them down. On day 18, I decided I wanted to build another portal, but with style, of course. I decided to use a lot of the same blocks that I did on my house, like the spruce planks and of course the stripped oak logs. When I was done, it looked really cool, but I wasn't ready to go into the nether just yet. So I decided to stay home on my land and do some farming and getting the land ready for building. I also made this really cool path right outside my house, and then I went adventuring. I found this cat that I really wanted to tame, but I didn't have any fish on me. I was very sad. Then off in the distance, I spotted some cows. Of course, I had to go slaughter them for their leather, and then I went back to my base. The morning of day 19 was mainly spent farming. I expanded my wheat farm a little bit, bred my cows, chopped some trees and filled in some holes on my land. Then I decided to harvest some sugarcane, of course, because that is something we need for books. I really wanted to get these bookshelves done so I could start enchanting as soon as possible. Come on cows, give me leather. On day 20, I wanted to build a place for smelting ores and stones. I built this really cool auto smelter that ended up looking kind of like a big giant furnace. Construction went into day 21 and I built a cool spruce overhang on top of the smelter. Items would automatically cycle through to be smelted and then go into a chest. I loved this. Some creepers tried their best to kill me, but luckily I was able to defend myself. Creepers are one of those mobs that can kill you even if you're in full enchanted armor, so I was very careful. I started off day 22 by clearing some unwanted visitors off of my land. And yes, I did just kill that llama. Then I found a new friend and luckily I had some bones on me, so I did tame him. His name was Rex. Sadly, I didn't have any name tags to name him with, but that's okay. I was able to get a level 30 enchant. I decided to enchant my sword and was very sad. All I got was in breaking three. I spent the rest of the day mining and was planning on hitting the nether tomorrow. I decided to enchant my chest plate and I got an amazing enchant, fire protection. This would really come in handy today when I was going to be in the nether. I went through the portal and luckily my spawn was amazing. I was right by a fortress. I was pretty terrified of falling in lava or being attacked by one of the many dangers that being in the nether brings. In fact, I almost died to two wither skeletons but was able to outsmart them. I spent my time in the fortress getting nether warts and blaze rods. These items were very important to be able to craft potions and get to the end. I also looked around a bit for magma cubes for fire res potions, but I didn't have any luck. I decided to plant some nether mushrooms as a reminder of my daring trip. I also planted some nether warts for brewing potions. I got a super lucky enchant on my pickaxe and now could mine super fast. I spent the rest of the day recovering from the nether trip. I expanded my wheat farm and gathered wood. On day 25, I wanted to build a villager breeder, but I needed a lot of sand for glass. I set out on an adventure to find a desert biome when I came across another village. It was getting dark and I saw my first enderman. I really needed ender pearls, so I built myself a little enderman trap and tried to get him over to me. When I tell you this moment made me jump out of my seat, I sincerely mean it. This scared the living daylights out of me. When I killed him, he even dropped an ender pearl. I decided to stay the night in the village. When I woke up the next morning, I discovered that there was a whole nother part of the village that I hadn't seen. I made sure to get all the sand I needed for my villager breeder and returned home. After putting the sand in my auto smelter, I decided to make an armor stand with my first set of armor in this world and put it on display. Day 27 was mainly spent outlining the villager breeder that I was going to be building and getting some materials and XP in the nether. I definitely am not really good at building farms, so I did have to use the help of Google for this one. But I think it came out pretty okay. On day 28, I knew what I needed to do and built the villager breeder. The outline that I made the day before really helped. This actually took all day, but I worked really hard and finished it by the end of the day, and now all I needed were villagers. One of the only things that I don't like about Minecraft is transporting villagers. I find this so difficult and annoying. 
they never want to cooperate. So day 29's goal was to transport three villagers from the nearby village into the breeder. This wasn't very easy. I even broke the breeder at some point, and it took me all day to troubleshoot and find out what I did wrong. This went into day 30 and day 31. But by the end of day 31, I transported the last villager. The breeder was finally done. All I had to do now was wait. I decided to celebrate by doing some enchanting. On day 32, I admired my land. I was really liking how things were coming along. I decided to spend the day cutting down trees and getting materials that I would need. By day 33, I knew that I needed to mass produce emeralds, and the only way to do this was to make a big farm. So I got to work on an even bigger wheat farm. Soon I would be trading with my farmer villagers, and I put this really cool fencing around it that matched my house perfectly. Day 34 was spent watching my villagers to breed. No, this isn't as weird as it sounds. Ah, back to the nether, my favorite place. I really wanted magma cream so that I could make fire res potions. That would make me feel a lot safer in the nether. So I went looking for lots of magmas today and mined any nether quartz that I could find because it gives a load of XP. I came back to my compound with three magma cream and brewed some fire res potions. Then I put protection one on my helmet and noticed that my villagers had a baby. I was super excited. I made him his own glass box to stay in. I know, very fancy. But I plan on making a trading hall later on. On day 37, I got the fire res potions that I brewed the day before. Then I crafted a bow and enchanted my sword. I got looting three. This was a really good enchant and it saved me many hours throughout this series. Then I was waiting for blazes to spawn. Come on guys, spawn any minute now. I ended up leaving the nether with like over 30 blaze rods. It was an insane amount. On day 38, I did a little bit of enchanting. I got some protection books and I even enchanted my bow. I knew that I needed phantom membranes for slow falling potions, so I would have to stay up late for a few nights. I decided to pass the time by starting to dig a giant quarry, and then once I noticed it was really dark, I went to look for Enderman. First, I found myself one of these drowned zombies. I think that's what they're called. I killed the zombie, and he actually dropped a trident. I know that these are super rare. This was one of the most insane things that happened to me over these 100 days. Then I was out Enderman hunting for the rest of the night. I wasn't lucky enough to get an Ender Pearl. The morning of day 39 was spent improving my path outside of my house. I added some gravel because honestly gravel is one of my favorite blocks. Then I grabbed some wood and put a fence around my quarry so I wouldn't accidentally fall in. I spent most of the day digging. Yes, I was just digging in this giant hole for most of day 39. Then once it got dark, I was on the hunt for Enderman. Still no luck. I figured my next best bet to find ender pearls would be from the nether, so on day 40 I decided to head back into the nether to find some endermen. This trip was nothing short of horrifying. I did a lot of exploring and did a lot of bridging over lava pools which is absolutely terrifying. I was pretty surprised I made it out alive. After mining tons of nether quartz for XP and even killing some magma cubes for magma cream, I was able to find a warped forest and I got a ton of endermen. I built myself a little 3x3 platform that was two blocks high so that the endermen actually couldn't get to me and this protected me really well. I ended up leaving the nether with 14 ender pearls thanks to my looting three sword. This was perfect to get to the stronghold. I returned home safely with XP and a bunch of resources. When I got back from the nether on day 42, I decided to just dig in my giant quarry for the rest of the night. On day 43, I knew that I wanted to start trading with my villagers, so I did some work to craft myself a lectern, and then I ran over to my villager and made him into a librarian. I'm kind of a noob with villagers and I didn't realize that once you trade with them once, you're kind of locked into that trade. So sadly, I was locked into giving this guy paper. I spent most of the day trying to get my first few emeralds and did a little bit of enchanting later on in the day. One thing that I find super peaceful in this game is fishing, and you can actually get some really great things from fishing. I personally really wanted some name tags, so day 44 was spent fishing. Yes, I fished the entire day. Sadly, I didn't get anything other than some fish. It wasn't very successful, but I did enjoy doing it. It's pretty relaxing. When in doubt in Minecraft, go collect materials. Sometimes this is exactly what I need to find some inspiration on what the heck to build. So I cut some trees, dug in my quarry, getting a ton of materials, and then I even decided to harvest my giant wheat farm for the first time since I expanded it. This was actually so satisfying to do. I don't know if you guys like farming big giant wheat fields, but I thought this was so much fun. And of course, I replanted the wheat. I also made myself some really good tools to do all of this farming, and I think I got a lot done over these two days. I needed mending, badly. The best enchant in the game. 
The only way I can obtain it is from a villager. But since I don't AFK in this world at all, my villager breeder wasn't producing a ton of villagers. I went to the village next to my base and found a villager who would buy wheat. I decided I wanted him at my base to help me get super rich, so I moved him. He was very difficult and uncooperative, and transporting him took all day. On day 48, I grabbed all my wheat and I wanted to trade them with my new villager friend. Oh, I also made him a cool little hut. After harvesting some wheat, I decided I wanted to expand the wheat farm to make even more emeralds. And then once I noticed there was a lightning storm, I got really worried because I remembered that I hadn't put a roof on my villager breeder. I ran over as fast as I could and put a roof on them so they wouldn't get struck by lightning. Because if you guys did not know, if villagers are struck by lightning, they turn into witches. As I was doing this, some phantoms showed up. I was actually really happy that they were here, and I killed them with my looting sword. I got six membranes, which was perfect for slow falling potions. The first thing I did the next day was brew some slow falling potions. Finally, I had phantom membranes. I was really excited about this because this was probably the most important item for the ender dragon fight. I spent a lot of time collecting oak wood so that I could build more fences for my farm, and I almost died to some bees. I worked on my farm all day and all night. Yay, day 50, we are halfway to day 100. Today, I finished the fence outline for my wheat farm, and I was pretty excited that I had survived 50 days in this world. So I baked a cake to celebrate. Day 51 was a farming day. I kind of got addicted to just farming wheat, and I spent all day filling in the area that I had marked out the days prior, and it took a bit of time. On day 52, I decided I needed a little bit of an adventure away from my base, so I set off in a boat. I found some horses and decided to tame one. I named him Tiki. Tiki and I set off on an adventure and we came across a village eventually. There was some decent loot in the village that I grabbed and then we continued on. But I noticed that there was a jungle up ahead. It was too difficult to take Tiki through the jungle, so I decided to leave him with the friendly villagers. While in the jungle, I came across cocoa beans, melons, and even this cute little bird. I decided to tame her and named her Blue. Blue and I decided to conquer the jungle together. This bird must have been good luck, because she brought me to a jungle temple. Here I was able to get some sticky pistons, which would really be helpful to build some farms and redstone contraptions later on. I also got some diamonds and some enchanted books. Then, as I was heading on in the jungle, we came across another jungle temple. We continued on our journey and came across a desert. I decided to explore the desert because I really wanted some sandstone. After finding a vein of sandstone, I decided to start breaking it and harvesting it, and I actually dug into a hidden desert temple. I didn't even know this could exist. I missed home and decided to head back. Blue and I picked up Tiki on the way, and we started to head home. Then I remembered of the ocean I had to cross to get back to my base. I didn't have any leads on me. I decided to leave Tiki in the land that I had found him. I made him a nice little hut to keep him safe, and I promised him that we would be back soon. I started to hear Blue taking damage, and I looked around. I didn't see anything until this showed up in chat. Why do these things always happen to me? On day 59, I expanded my farm and added in pumpkins and melons that I had gotten from all of my traveling. Days 60 through 62 were spent back in the nether to get more XP. I really wanted some good enchants on all of my armor and tools so that fighting the ender dragon would be easy peasy. And considering I didn't have any mob grinders or XP farms, the nether was my best bet at getting lots of XP quickly. And I did get a lot of XP. I got up to like 48 levels and I was very happy. But on my way home from the nether, I got way too close to dying. I mean, way too close. I was bridging across a pool of lava and I must have misclicked and I did not place a block. And uh, yeah, I, I took a lot of fall damage here. This was absolutely terrifying. If I was a little bit more over to the right, I probably would have died. After this, I was terrified. I started heading back to my portal and tunneled the entire way there. I didn't want to make any bridges or go high up or anything. 
Because I was so cautious, it took me a little while to get back to my portal, but eventually, on day 63, I returned home. On day 64 and 65, I spent some time harvesting wheat. It actually takes so long to clear this farm, and I made sure to replant everything, and I also had to light up the area a little bit better because it wasn't super well lit. And with all of the wheat I was earning, I was selling a ton to my villager, and this gave me XP and loads of emeralds, which is perfect. Day 66, it was time for another attempt to get a mending villager. So I went over to the village next to my base and I started to try to get a mending enchant. If you guys don't know how this works, basically what you have to do is place a lectern down so the villager is turned into a librarian and then keep breaking the lectern and replacing it until the villager has the trade that you want. This took literally the entire day, but eventually I did get a mending book. Now, it wasn't the greatest price, but I can turn this villager into a zombie villager and cure them later on to get the prices discounted. The goal of day 67 was to get rich. I spent all day just farming emeralds. I did this by harvesting wheat and then of course selling it to my villager and I also used my new pumpkin and melon farm to get extra emeralds. These are really really beneficial and I was hoping to get a silk touch axe so that I would be able to do a melon trading more efficiently but sadly I didn't have one yet. I would use these emeralds to buy more mending books because I needed the best of the best gear if I was going to be fighting the ender dragon. I also spent some time today leveling some land down. I did this because there were a lot of hills around my farm and I didn't really like it. I started off day 68 with some more trades and then I really wanted to upgrade some of my tools. But there was only one problem, I was completely out of diamonds. So I spent the entire day mining and searching for diamonds. Now this wasn't too bad because I did have mending on my pickaxe. So my pickaxe was virtually indestructible which was really great. Day 69 started with an unwanted visitor in my house, I had to take him out. Do you guys remember at the beginning of the video when I said that I really wanted a fortune 3 shovel? Yeah, well now I had one. And I also got an efficiency 2 axe which was kind of decent. I started designing a bridge today to get to the village quicker because I always have to swim through a river to get there and I think a bridge would look pretty cool. For some reason I actually wasn't filming on day 70 but I built this really cool bridge. On day 71, of course, I spent some time trading with villagers, and I wanted to use my new bridge. I headed into the village, and I tried to get a cheaper mending villager, and that I did. Then he got loose, and I had to throw him in a pit until I could move him. Sorry, villager. Today was the day that I decided I needed netherite. I sheared my sheep so that I could make a load of beds, and I headed into the nether. If you guys didn't know, beds actually explode in the nether, so this is a really effective way of finding netherite. I went down to Y15 and started to look for netherite. For a full set of armor and a sword, I believe I needed 34 pieces, I could be wrong. So I stayed in the nether until I got all of this. This took many hours. I was actually in the nether until day 79. On day 79, I smelted the netherite and then crafted it into ingots. I was so hype. Then I upgraded all of my armor, but I wasn't really worthy of wearing it yet. So I put it on an armor stand in my house for safekeeping. After getting some emeralds from my farmer villager, I decided to head over to the breeder and I got myself a protection for villager. And then this happened. I don't know how I didn't die here. I was very frightened. Like I said guys, creepers are insanely powerful. Today was day 80. I spent the day working with my villagers and made sure that my land was lit up. I should really invest in a wall, anything to keep creepers away from me. Then I noticed my villager breeder was broken. It took me a long time to troubleshoot this and figure out what was happening. Finally, at the end of the day, I made sure my villagers were safe and happy. I was starting to feel confident and prepared enough to start thinking about the ender dragon fight. So I spent this entire day preparing. I brewed potions, got supplies ready, and did major upgrades to my armor. With all of the upgrading done to my armor, I started running out of XP, so I knew I had to make a trip to the nether. I was in the nether for about a day and a half just mining quartz and killing some random mobs for XP. I also picked up some gold so that I could make some extra golden apples because honestly, who doesn't want golden apples when they're fighting the ender dragon? 
When I made it back home, I actually had quite a lot of XP. I spent some time brewing potions. I wanted strength, speed, and slow falling potions. These were pretty important for fighting the ender dragon. I knew that strength potions would help me kill the dragon quicker, and slow falling potions were pretty much essential unless I wanted to get flung up into the air. I did some extra farming and trading with my villagers so that I could make sure that I had the best enchants on my armor. I wanted to make sure that I had unbreaking 3 so that my armor wouldn't break in the middle of the fight. Some people may say that I was over prepared, but I would much rather be over prepared than under prepared. While enchanting my bow, I got infinity. This is one of the best enchants that you can get on your bow. Also, I'm pretty sure that I had a power 4. Day 84, I was really ready for the dragon fight. I grabbed all of my materials, including tons of cobblestone, all of the eyes of enders that I could carry, potions, food, golden apples, and everything else. I also knew that I needed to upgrade my sword to netherite. I was ready for this. Then I put on my shiny new netherite armor, and I left. It took me a really long time to find the portal. Like, I mean a really long time. But finally, I did get to the stronghold. Now, once I was in the stronghold, it took me even longer to find the portal. But eventually, after running around for long enough, I did stumble into the portal room. I broke the silverfish spawner, and I placed my eyes of enders into the portal carefully. Then I braced myself for what I was about to face. I jumped in the portal and prepared myself mentally for this fight. And here we were, we had finally made it into the end. Luckily, my spawn was very close to the actual end island where the dragon is, so all I had to do was bridge a few blocks, and then I drank my potions, and got going. I promise you I wasn't stalling here. Okay, maybe I was a little bit. I was pretty scared. Made my way up to the surface and knew that I had to take out those crystals. So I got my bow out and thought I would try to shoot at them and then I realized my aim is terrible. So I figured I would tower up. If I had height, I would definitely be able to hit these crystals. I towered up to the first crystal, very scared, but then I remembered that I had my slow falling potion effect on. This made me feel a lot better. After getting all the way up, I was able to break the crystal and didn't even fly off. This was a pretty big accomplishment. Then I jumped off the edge. Whee! Luckily, I did have the slow falling potion, so that made this possible. I towered my way up to the second crystal, and I actually almost got hit by Dragon's Breath. This was pretty scary, because this stuff could kill you pretty quickly. I started panicking and didn't know what to do. Then I realized I just needed to break this crystal, and then I could get out of here. So I broke the crystal and decided to get the heck away from the Dragon's Breath. I towered up to yet another crystal and figured that I would start taking them out with my bow once I got to the top. I was praying that I wouldn't run out of blocks for this. As you guys know, I play things really safe, so that's what I did. And I almost died to that blast, but it's all good. I started to shoot out the crystals one by one, and let me tell you, my aim was pretty good here. I mean, seriously, these shots are all on point. Taking out these crystals was necessary if I wanted to stop the dragon from healing. As I was shooting the crystals, the dragon came and shot me with dragon's breath. I was pretty frightened, but I tried to stay calm and just drank some potions, and I actually got a bottle of dragon's breath, which happens to be an achievement, so that was pretty cool. I checked that I still had slow falling and jumped off the edge. I had one more crystal to shoot, and luckily I was able to hit it with a bow shot. Now I just had to kill the dragon. He landed in the center, so I decided to try to kill him as best as I could with my sharpness for sword. I think I got some good hits on him. Then the dragon flung me in the air, and I was really scared here. I could have gotten flung off the edge. I started taking damage and was freaking out. Then I just tried my best to stay calm and tried to hit him with any arrow shots that I could. Because I was so nervous, I pretty much missed all of these shots. So I was really becoming dependent on my sword skills when the dragon would land. I made sure that I had constant strength because that was pretty important. Then the dragon landed again. I charged at him with my sword and then was flung up in the air again. Oh my goodness, this was scaring me. 
I went up to the dragon and whacked him as hard as I could with my sword before he flew away again. The dragon was at almost half health, so I was feeling a little bit more relaxed at this point. My bow shots were doing a lot of damage. The most important thing was that I stay away from the dragon's breath, which I did a pretty good job at. Again, I hit the dragon with my sword, bringing his health down very quickly. Okay, don't watch this part. I missed way too many bow shots. I was able to finish the dragon off with my sword. Then I watched as the dragon disintegrated into thousands of levels of XP. Well, actually, it was only 68 levels, but let's just say it was thousands. I went around and proudly picked up all the XP. I was unbelievably happy that I had just killed the Ender Dragon in Hardcore Minecraft. This was a huge accomplishment for me. The first thing I wanted to do was grab the egg, so I went over to it, punched it, and followed it. Once I found it, I knew that I had to place a torch under it so that I could retrieve the egg. This was also an achievement. I was so happy to have the dragon egg in my inventory. I saw this as a huge accomplishment, but I knew that I didn't want to do end city raiding today. I would be back very soon for this. I just needed a few day break. This was very stressful. I made it home safely with the dragon egg. I would be going back in a few days to explore and get an elytra. Don't worry. I just needed the comfort of normal Minecraft for a little while before going back into the scary end. I wanted to spend this day just kind of going back to the roots of how I started this world. Farming. So that's what I did all day. I harvested my wheat, pumpkins, and melons, sold them to my villager, and made sure my animals were well taken care of. On day 88, I enchanted myself a new axe and started a new project. I realized I really hadn't done that much building in this world and was kind of sad about it. But I had a really cool project in mind. I wanted to build a place to showcase my favorite items of this series. The coolest things that I had collected over these 100 days. I started smelting some clay for bricks and grabbed some other materials. Then I started to construct this build. Finally, on day 90, I finished the Ancient Artifact Building. Yes, it now had a name. This was called the Ancient Artifact Building. I tried to stick with the theme that I had going with everything else I had built, and I think I did a pretty good job. And I took a long time to build this because, yes, I am a perfectionist, and I wanted it to look super nice. On day 92, I traveled back to the Stronghold. I knew that I wanted to go end city raiding. I think that's what it's called anyways. So I headed back to the stronghold. This time it was a lot easier to find because I did write the coordinates down. Then I jumped back in the portal and I had to find the end gateway. Once I found it, I built a little platform out just to be safe and I was able to travel through with a trapdoor. I was so excited to get an elytra. I even brought fireworks with me so I could fly. And also I really wanted one of those dragon skulls and shulker boxes and everything else. I was just so excited. I don't know what my luck in this world is, but the end gateway actually brought me right to an end city with a ship. I was in shock. I spent a load of time raiding this, and I got my elytra and dragon head, and trust me, I got tons of shulker skulls. Looting 3 really makes a big difference. Purple blocks are one of my favorite blocks in the game, and I wanted to harvest some, but I realized that I only had a few days left in this world, so I would come back to that later. By the way guys, if you are enjoying this video, I am creating 200 days as this video is going live. Anyways, as you guys can see, I do get a ton of shulker skulls and a good amount of loot. Once I got my elytra, I decided I really wanted to fly, so I did take a flight. This was so much fun, and I actually found another end city. This time it didn't have a ship, but I was able to get some good loot and some more shulkers. The first thing I did when I returned from end city raiding was craft some shulker boxes. I also went through all of my loot and put it into my valuable chests. Then I got a strange itch to build a brewery. I wanted to build a cool place where I could brew all of my potions. So I started on a build. It was built with mostly stone and halfway through I ran out. So I went in my quarry and started mining some cobblestone. And when I was done, I noticed that there were some pillagers near me. So I decided to kill them and then I got a weird idea. What if I went and started a raid? Totems of Undying were one thing that I didn't have in this world yet. So without hesitation, I flew over to the village and started a raid. Don't get me wrong, this was well worth it, but it was very difficult. I don't think people realize how hard raids are. Sometimes there are just so many enemies surrounding you. Also, I absolutely hate the Vex. I want that removed from the game. They are so hard to fight. 
I was able to beat round after round of the raid, collecting some totems of undying as I went. But eventually, I kind of lost some of the raiders and I had to call it a day. I returned to my base with three totems of undying. Day 96 was another building day. All I did was build this brewery. But don't worry, I will move in all of my artifacts very soon. On day 97, I had finished the brewery and I was just decorating the inside. This is a really cool interior and I was actually pretty happy with it. I didn't get to add all the little details that I wanted to, but maybe we can do that in 200 days. On day 99, this is what I had in my ancient artifacts building. These were all of my greatest accomplishments, all of my sentimental items. This was one of the coolest ways I could have ended off these 100 days. Day 100. Wow, I can't believe I survived 100 days in this world. You guys already know, I spent the day with my villagers. We celebrated the accomplishment of 100 days in hardcore survival Minecraft. I realized there were so many things I wanted to do and that these 100 days were just the beginning. If you guys did enjoy this video, please leave a like on it and subscribe if you haven't already. 200 days is in the making and my discord will actually get an early access to the video. Thank you once again if you did make it to the end and I'll see you later. Peace.